I'm one of the trainers at Decisions, and today I'm going to showcase an action that was added in Decisions 8.9 that can be very useful and easy to use. If you have ever wanted to move steps into a subflow after they've been set up, this action is going to be a huge time saver. To show this, I'm just going to use three math steps, and we're going to say that I want to add these first two into a subflow. Before 8.9, if I wanted to do this, I had to do one of two things. Either completely recreate all of these steps in my subflow, which is not an option if it's a large and complex use case. Otherwise, I would have to take these, highlight them, and group them. I could save these steps as a template that I could use later. Then, when I create, once I create my subflow, I can do it here or from the folders. I create a new subflow. I can use that template to place these steps in my new subflow exactly as they were. The one large annoyance with setting up subflows is the inputs. I am going to have to redefine all the inputs that I want in this particular subflow. I need to make sure I have all the inputs, all the data types for them. You know, the more inputs, the longer it's going to take me to do that. Make sure that these inputs are being passed in. Luckily, I know to choose the correct names so that they automatically do that. Um, you also have to make sure that whatever you want is being passed out of the end step. So I've got to make sure that my base time site is being passed out of this subflow. Then when I go back here, I can remove those steps because they're in my subflow now. And when I attach my subflow, make it look a little nice and make sure that my inputs from up here are being passed in properly. And I've got my output being passed in for my last step. There we go. If the, if the use case is a lot more complex, this will obviously take a lot longer. So it's doable, but it can definitely get a little arduous if it's going to be a large use case. However, now that we are in 8.9, we have a new action. So let's say I do the same exact thing. I want to take these. Instead of grouping them, I actually have an action called create subflow. By doing this, I can create a subflow right away, give it the name that I want, and click Create Subflow. Notice how it instantly pops them into a subflow. I have the inputs. They're being placed into my subflow. I've got the output exactly as I had before. If I enter inside this, I can see the same thing. Maybe you might want to clean it up a little bit. Or maybe you may decide you need to add some things afterwards or maybe change some of the outputs um, if you need. But for the most part, everything is done, snappy, easy, completely finished. And it all flows right into the next step where it has that value that's needed. Super quick. If this is more complex, it works in that case as well. So it's a great quick way and it can save you a lot of times as you are trying to organize your flows into subflows. Thank you for watching.